activities that usually takes place within the confines of a building, such as a plant or warehouse, between a building and a transportation agency. So, ito po yung mga ginagamit natin na mga kagamitan para po mas madali po natin yung trabaho natin, like sa mga warehouse po, or mas mapabilis din po para po sa mga paglipat-lipat po ng mga gamit. Next is material handling dimensions, movement, time, quantity, and space. Next is why material handling. Siyempre po to improves efficiency. Yun nga para mas mapadali yung ginagawa natin dito at hindi mapahirap pa. Pangalawa is yung improves productivity. Dito naman is para mapabilis naman yung gawain natin gamit yung mga materials na mas nakakatulong. Third is maximize profits. Uh, to determine the price, input and output levels na maglilid sa highest possible total profit po. And lastly is yung competitive edge. Para alam natin naman yung mga advantage natin sa mga competitors natin. Next is yung most successful brands in the world uses material handling. Uh, so, sandali, yun, example, si, si, sino itong nagre-report? Si, si Jay? Carl, uh, uh, Carl uh, meron kang mga sample dyan na may mga picture ka naman ng material handling mamaya? Meron kang sample? Apa, meron. Ah, sige, sige. Yes. Okay. Uh, most successful brands in the world uses material handling. Uh, familiar naman tayo sa mga brands na to. Unang-una is yung Toyota, Walmart, Disney, Coca-Cola, NASA, John Deere, Mitsubishi, and Pepsi Cola. Uh, next slide. Where material handling equipment is utilized. Uh, nandyan po yung mga example kung saan natin masyado ginagamit yung mga equipment natin. First is yung sa mga warehouse, ports, manufacturing plants, and last is yung airports. Next. Types of material handling equipment. Uh, transport equipment, positioning equipment, unit load formation equipment, storage equipment, and identification and control equipment. First is yung transport equipment. Next. These equipments are used to move materials from one location to other. Ayan, isa na din dyan yung example ng dump trucks para mas mapadali natin yung mga dinideliver natin sa ibang lugar. And one example dyan is yung conveyor. De, do, dun ko muna, pakibalik mo muna nga, uh, Carl, sa dump truck. Ano yung dinadump? Ano yung mga material na pa, dinadump? Uh, ano po? Katulad ng? Kadalasan po dyan mga semento po or mga lupa po lupa. na ginagamit sa mga... Yung mga mabibigat pong bagay, mga exam. Uh, nga, lupa, bato, um, di ba? Yung mga saminahan, uh, di ba? Mm, pwede rin ano, pwede rin basura, di ba? Tama, mas mapadali po yung paglipat nila sa ibang lugar. Pantambak, tama, no? mga lupa, puti, tama. buhangin. Okay, very good. Yes. Ano Next pa? Po is Next po yung conveyors. Conveyors mm -hmm. equipment equipment used to move materials over a fixed path between specific points. Conveyors are used when material is to, is to be moved frequently between specific points to move materials over a fixed path. Mamaya po is i-discuss po nila Vlad and Thompson yung about some layers po. Okay. Uh, next slide please. Positioning equipment. Positioning equipment used to handle material at a single location so that the material is in the correct position for subsequent handling, machining, transport, or storage. Next. Uh, yan po yung mga example ng positioning equipment. Yung cranes and forklifts. Madalas natin nakikita yung mga cranes sa mga matasas na building para mag-position po ng mga gamit. And isa na rin dyan yung forklifts po na madalas nakikita natin sa mga storage room para po i-position din po nila. Uh, next naman po is nandito po sige para sa load formation equipment. Unit load formation equipment. So first, um, 
i-describe muna natin kung ano yung unit load. So, unit load ay yung mga number of items arranged uh, that can be handled or moved as a single object. So, with this, uh, unit load formation equipment is used to maintain their conditions during movement or transport. For example, ang pwede nyo gamitin ay beans or baskets, cartons, bags, crates, and pallets as well. Next slide. So, for pallets, uh, pallets are uh, platforms with clearance enabling the use of forklift for lifting purposes. Next slide. Also, pallet boxes are reusable container used to unitize or protect bulk materials that can be both used uh, for distribution and on process handling as well. Next slide. Now, for storage equipment, um, these are used for holding materials over a period of time. Next slide. Uh, one example of this are, uh, I mean, is the drive-through truck wherein its loads are supported by rails and attached to the beams in which uh, lift trucks are driven between them or in between them. So this requires similar sizes or capacity of loads. Next slide. For identification and control equipment, um, these are used for collecting and communicating the information that is used to coordinate uh, uh, the flow of materials within a facility and between the facility and its suppliers and customers. So, these are mainly used in logistics, control, and inventories as well. Next slide. Some examples of this are barcodes, which represent various alphanumeric characters. Um, is composed of a barcode system that includes barcode label, barcode scanner, and barcode printer. Next slide. So that is the example of one of your barcodes and its scanner. Next slide. For radio frequency tag or what we call the RF tag, it should be a tag. And it's a data encoded on chip and paste in a tag that can be read within 30 feet of an antenna and that can be attached to containers or movable items. Also, we have magnetic stripes, um, which are evidently seen on credit or debit cards or smart cards, wherein uh, it requires contact with the reader as well. Next slide. So, for the purpose of material handling, or the main purpose is to consider the material safety as, as well as the human safety. So the next one is the feeders and storage pilots that fly through. So feeders are uh, devices using material handling systems to control the flow in bulk materials from one area to another. <coughs> they play a crucial role in such like the industries, mining, construction, manufacturing, and agriculture. So basically they are, in summary, they transport and regulate the material flow and they improve the efficiency and the uniformity of a certain material. They can enhance the safety too for the workers and most of all they are not manually they facilitate in automation and they can adapt in different different kind of um, variable conditions for it adapt to changes. So, in a custom for the customer group to change for certain specific applications, it can be tailored to a specific requirements of different industries and applications. And most of all, they can reduce waste. And next slide, please. So, this is the different kinds or types of feeders. We have the vibrate, vibrate, vibratory, screw, belt, and apron. Next slide, please. So we have the vibratory feeders, um, also known as vibrating feeders or vibration feeders. Um, devices used to move and convey bulk materials to control vibration. Um, in other words, um, they have the ability to provide or 
control the consistent flow of materials, facilitating the various industrial process and improving their efficiency through the vibration, vibratory motion that helps them provi- prevent material blockages and ensure the smooth and reliable material handling system. So we can see this machine in this type of industry like the food industry, um, the makers of the ceramic or glass, drugs, etc. So next one please, next slide. Screw feeders, um, also known as auger feeder, is a mechanic mechanism that uses rotating helical screw blades known as an auger to convey or feed bulk materials from a hopper or container to receiving device. So in short, um, this design allows them to handle a variety of materials, making them valuable in processing processes ranging from material, transport to size, and dosing and dispensing. This type of machine you can see in the industry of a ceramic. You can see this too in some wastewater, wastewater or water treatment facilities, foods and mining and etc. Et Next slide, please. Um, the belt feeders are the type of feeder that uses a continuous belt or chain to transport and to meter the bulk material. So in short, the, their versatile material handling devices are widely used in industries which and where continuous and control flow of bulk materials is concerned. This type of machine you can see in this industry within the wood, wood, steel, cement, or mining, etc. Et Another feeder is a type of bulk material handling equipment that is used to feed or extract big heavy abrasive lumpy material from bins in various industries. So in short, they are strong or robust equipment designed for heavy duty application industry that can handle large and challenging materials. They provide reliable and continuous flow of materials. And this machine you can see in the industry such as the type of wood, cement, steel, and mining, and stones and different kinds of you know, stones and etc. etc. Next slide, please. So we have the advantages of feeders. They regulate the material flow, prevent flogging, uniform distribution, control discharge rate, accurate metering. Next slide, please. So the next one is we have the storage silos. Our integral to material handling provides a secure and organized space for bulk material storage. Well, there are versatile structures that use in various industries to store and manage bulk materials efficiently. They are designed to be tailored to specific requirements of different materials and industries, ensuring proper storage, protection, and control, dispensing materials as needed. So next slide, please. Then there are types of the storage. We have the flat bottom, the cone bottom, and the dome. So next slide, please. We can, so we can see the picture. So this is what it looks like. The flat bottom storage. Our storage structures using agriculture and various industries to store bulk materials, including the grain seeds and other general products. So in short. Um, they handle a wide range of materials and their construction construction features are customized based on the specific requirements of stored materials in the industry in which they are used for. So you can see this storage. So you can see the storage in some industry that makes fertilizer, chemicals, water treatment, seed and grain, and etc. etc. Next, please. So we have the cone bottom. It is also known as the hopper bottom, or as you can call it, or the storage structures used for storing bulk materials such as grain seeds and other general products. Um, the cone bottom are chosen for applications for complete material discharge is crucial, and we can see the design allows it for the efficient flow without the need for mechanical assistance. The versatility of the cone bottom silos makes them suitable for various industries that handle bulk materials. So, this type of storage you can see in this industry where wood, mining, waste water, cement, seed, 
chemical and other industries that use it. Next slide, please. The drone. Also known as the drone storage structures are specialized storage facilities designed for storing bulk materials in large, rounded drone shape structures. In short, they are unique for their structural and storage benefits. The curved shape distributes load efficiently, uh, providing stability and strength. Um, additionally, the sealed environment helps in preserving the quality of storage materials. Such as you can see the storage in different kinds of industries such as oil, food, wastewater, water treatment, fertilizer, mining, energy, chemical, and so on. So, next slide, please. So, these are the advantages of the storage island. The optimized space utilization, the, the preservation of material quality, the flexibility of design. The easy monitor and inventory control to reduce material handling costs. So we have that as all. And next box. The design configuration. Design effective feeders and trailers to try careful configuration of factors such as material property. So factors take the capacity requirements and environmental conditions. The goal is to optimize the design to ensure a reliable and efficient material handling system. So there are different kinds of Customizations between the feeders and pilots according to the ano yung um, pinakosin ng isang industry or company. So, let's go. Maintenance and safety. Regular maintenance is useful for the longevity and optimal performance of the feeders and the third pilots. Between inspection, cleaning, preventive measures, and try to remove great calls and to safety in the workplace. Implementing safety policies is essential to protect workers and maintain a secure working environment. Since um, they are heavy machines or sorry, just we should ensure the maintenance and safety of this kind of structure since bulk materials are not in our office with lots of industry companies. So, if you want to see malaki na rin ang damage na magiging effective sa company or industry. Next. Conveyor system. Next slide. A conveyor system is a mechanical handling device that moves load and commodities automatically while reducing labor expenses. Workplace, hazards, and human handling. For moving large or heavy objects, it makes use of speed chain rollers, wheels, or able. Typical design includes special curve shape wheels or rotors for turn to enter the board. Belt follows a curve or disc without becoming angled. And a rotor to power the driving tool and load. Dito naman po sa ano, first. Conveyor system. Ito po yung isang mechanical handling device na tumutulong po sa atin na mag-move ng mga objects po from one place to another po. Next slide. Uh, advantage of conveyor system. A conveyor system primary function is to transfer items from one place to another and things that are too big or heavy for, for it to delete by hand can be moved thanks to the design. Time is saved while moving goods from one place to another with conveyor. The advantage naman po niya is matutulungan niya po tayo maglipat-lipat ng mga gamit ng mas mabilis po and uh, tutulungan na po tayo kapag hindi po natin kayang buhati ng mano-mano yung gamit po natin na ililipat uh, next slide po ang sad natin yun the kinds of materials for control system may make are restricted for transportation considerations the maximum load it can handle is limited other drawbacks include the control system permanent nature and the uh, difficulty of moving it once established. So disadvantage naman po na limited lang po yung mga object na malalagay po natin sa mga system. Hindi po pwede yung sword ng bigat kasi po nagsisira po yung device po na. Device po na. Yun lang po. This is the type of conveyor. 
Yung una po is back conveyor and chain, chain conveyor, bakit elevator conveyor, wheel conveyor, vibrating conveyor, roller conveyor, wireless conveyor, and so on. Belt conveyor are the most commonly used power conveyor because they are the most versatile and the least expensive. This conveyor uses belts to transport materials with this extent loop supported by two pulleys in the air system. It needs motor power to travel objects that is why the type of load can be moved from the objects. This conveyor are ideal in moving bulk materials or irregular shape objects that might stop on the top of the conveyor. Chain conveyor use an endless chain that both to the transmit power and the proper material through its head, either placed directly by the chain or by attachment to the chain. The conveyor consists of continuous chain that runs through a series of sprockets for use. The chain is typically made of metal and driven by a motor. This conveyor can be single or more chains and run in configuration. Bakit elevator conveyor can elevate a bed of bulk materials from light to heavy and from fine to large lumps such as grain, powder, and other flowing materials. In a continuous and controlled manner, bakit are contained for cups attached to a conveying belt or chain. Bakit scoop up the material at the bottom of the conveyor elevator and carry it to the top where it is then discharged. Wheel conveyors may be powered or per gravity driven. When powered wheel conveyors, a motor or other type mechanism is used to move the wheels and consistent with the materials. This is, this is suitable for application where materials need to be moved manually or minimal energy. They are commonly used in industry like warehouse, distribution, and manufacturing for dust, loading, and unloading trucks, moving boxes, or packages, and transporting materials to the facility. A beta conveyor is a type of conveying system that uses the rotary motion to move materials along a horizontal or slightly inclined path. This system uses a rotary motion generated by oscillating and rotating mechanism to transport bulk materials. The design and specification of the rotating conveyor can vary the specific needs of the industry and materials being handled. Roller conveyor is used in series of cylindrical rollers to transport goods or materials from one place to another. The rollers are positioned at a slight decline and item place so the conveyor will move down the line without the need of external power. These conveyors are designed to allow the product to accumulate along the conveyor line without crossing down. Wireless conveyors are commonly used in various industries for applications such as heat treatment, drying, cooling, washing, and conveying of products. In process, where a traditional solid conveyor belt might not be suitable, the belt is typically woven or constructed in a mesh pattern, allowing for both flexibility and strength. The mesh design of the belt provides an open structure allowing air, liquids, or gases to pass. Screw conveyor. Screw conveyor is a mechanical system that uses a rotating helical screw blade and material inside the tube is moving to the end or discharge. Screw conveyor is particularly powered by electrical motors connected to the drive system. The conveyor typically has an inlet for material loading and an outlet for material loading. Ilang po sa 